The purpose of this video is to show you how the Pearson R correlation can be transformed into a T value, which then a P value can be determined, which allows one to make decisions about whether the correlation is statistically significant or not, in addition to calculating 95% confidence intervals. So this is the remarkable Pearson's R correlation. And what's also remarkable is that Carl Pearson derive the standard error of the correlation as well. So we have familiarity already from the textbook about the standard error of the mean, which was discussed at length in an earlier chapter of the textbook. Well, this correlation, the Pearson correlation, also has a standard error. And that standard error can be used to transform the R value into a T value. And then we can make reference to the T distribution to find out the chances of having obtained an R value equal to something or greater under the expectation that the null hypothesis is true in the population. So this is the standard error of the correlation. It's 1 minus R squared divided by N minus 2 and square rooted. There's probably not a huge amount of sense with this standard error formula, except to say that you are measuring error. This is the error element of the correlation, and it's being divided by the sample size. And then it's square rooted into a value that's on the same scale as a correlation. So not a correlation squared, but a correlation. And that's why it's got to be square rooted, is we have to get rid of this square value. So once the Pearson R is found, you can calculate the statistical significance of a T value. And in a textbook, it was found that the correlation of 0.338 divided by the standard error produced a T value of 2.21. And the question is, is that t value of 2.21 so unusual that we can declare it to be statistically significant? And by inference, that would imply that the correlation is statistically significant. And the way I suggest that you can do that in the textbook, in addition to just doing it automatically in a program that does all the calculations for you with a click of a button, is to make reference to the t distribution in Excel, because Excel has a t distribution that you can call upon to find out what are the chances of having obtained a t value of 2.21. And all you need to know in addition to the t value are the degrees of freedom, which are 38, n minus 2. The degrees of freedom associated with the Pearson correlation are always equal to n minus 2. And then tails, which is equal to 2. We want a two-tail test. This function that I'm talking about here in the correlation context is exactly the same function that was used in the one sample t-test section of the textbook. You may recall that I called upon the t-distribution to find out if a t-value associated with a one sample t-test is statistically significant. We're doing exactly the same thing because the ratio of a correlation by its standard error also follows the t-distribution fairly closely. So when I did that in Excel, so I need to go equals t-distribution and I've got to type in my t value. It's always positive values. If you get a negative correlation, you will get a negative t value. But in this Excel function, you have to input positive values. Really, they're absolute values. And absolute means there are no negatives and positives. Everything is without a sign, which means it's positive. And we add the degrees of freedom. And we want a two-tailed test, not a one-tailed test. And then we close the bracket. And we get a p-value of p equal 0 0.033, which is what was reported in the textbook when I described the use of this function. Therefore, the null hypothesis of no association between education, years completed, and earnings can be rejected. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis has support, which is that there is an association between years of education completed and earnings, because this p-value is less than alpha, which is 0.05 in the vast majority of cases.